Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sogdian series. Yes, as you can see on the map, the Hanate of Sogdiana has been liberated, won its war of independence, I should say. So, the Hanate, uh, for the first time in nearly, god, 90 years or so, because we know that, um, that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sultan Feridun Fearless, which he didn't live long soon after, um, so, he so died a natural death, so it was around, oh, I was way off, <laughs> so it was over 50 years of Turanian domination over us Sogdians, even though we're only just being content with what we are, and all that, so I went through grandfather, my mother, whom I murdered. Yes, I can immediately say that because I am a kinslayer. I killed my own mother, ordered well, to her to be murdered. Originally, Queen Chat the Ill was going to be the liberator of the uh, Sogdians that would lead to their freedom. But however, Ekshid Yena, and yes, the title Ekshid is back. So apparently it is gender neutral, is Ekshid, which could be a Sogdian word for leader or ruler or something like that. I kind of forget which, but because I did a little bit more of some reading of Sogdian history, especially during the Muslim conquest of Transoxiana, which especially during the uh, wars between the Umayyad and the Turgesh, a cognate. Smaller one. When I was really, really <laughs> enlightened by that piece of history there, because I was wondering why, of all the Muslim conquests, that one took the longest. Because Sogdians themselves, they were being a bit shady. Like it's like, yes, yeah, some of them did side with them, while others, you know, for themselves, and other. Uh, told the Turgesh to protect them and all that. But obviously all these events, even as you can see in this timeline, as it's 618, which basically means um, this is 100 years before it. And it's highly doubtful that, you know, Rise of Islam and things, all that, it isn't going to happen because... Look at the game rules. Scroll all the way down. Well, it's got to be here somewhere. Um, it's part of the... Uh, when a world stop making sense. Where is it? Sometimes that old mouse wheel's a bit funny. Keep looking, you'll find it. Is it features? Or is it uh, game rules again? Because it's part of the when the world stopped making sense that it would say something like that. What is it? But I do recall that from the beginning that the Rise of Islam event has been disabled because if you leave it on even though it's beta, it may not run reliably. So it's better not risk it. Ah, here it is. The work is in progress. The untested Rise of Islam feature is disabled. If you were to turn that on, um, who knows what it'll do. And plus, it isn't really focused on what's going on in Arabia for this series as much as what's focused on here. It's Sogdiano. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, all that. So, that's just a reminder. <laughs> I mean, I would not imagine me doing a some sort of Sogdian series during a time when, okay, a hundred years later, during the time when the Umayyad Caliphate would move in and fight in these wars and Turgesh up there would be dealing with them too and all that. It sounds chaotic. But it does make an interesting backdrop whenever I do a, um, at some point in 2022 that, um, that I may want to do a Sogdian series on Crusader Kings 3 and I could use all that as a a backdrop, a background, where I can imagine doing a narration of a a prologue, an episode zero to this future 
Song Dance series for Crusader Kings 3. So it's probably not going to happen until like later 2022 or whenever I wish that says, Oh, I like what this new DLC or Futures is going to come up with and um, all that. Again, just interesting ideas. But anyways, I am recording it on Christmas week. It is Christmas week for me from where I come from. But, um, <laughs> any comics on it? Do song dance deserve Christmas? Well, probably to the Nestorian Christians if there are any here. But obviously, everybody around here is mainly Kurmazta, with a small number of Tibetans, and uh, mannequins still there, and even Hindus in Balkh. But sooner or later, because we have recently signed a treaty, a peace treaty, a truce after we won the war of Sogdian independence so we will not be able to fight them until January 1st of 628 or as soon as this ruler dies which would be much preferable but we can't kill him yet because not because of his intrigue because he hasn't done anything maddening yet anything that is extremely stupid in my personal opinion but whenever he passes and this man becomes the successor. We will fight for a war to get Fergana back. Sogdian liberation is not over yet. Not until Fergana is retaken. And of course I noticed that title of um, the Empire of Serendia. Serendia. Uh, all you need is kingdoms of Transoxiana and Tarim. But you need that. And we have only 26% uh, control, which is in Sogdia proper. And bypass um, Fagana. And then we'll get into areas like Khotan, Karasha, Shul, Aksu, Kuchi, even as far as Dongguang. We could try to create this empire. But the idea of a Sogdian Empire would sound nice. I mean, I could have easily just, you know, fight for it, but Turan is a titular title. So, maybe we should uh, give it a shot, alright? Because with Turan now split, that means those lands over here is going to be separate from them. Unless we fight in Fagana and drive them out of there, and who knows what control they will be. But it's likely going to be up there, even in Hotan, rather than anywhere like, say, over here, where it's held by vassals. So I'm not terribly worried about the Suren Empire down there, the Empire of Iran Shah, only because he's of a Kurmansta faith, probably influenced by my sister, who was married. And of course she dislikes me because I'm the one that killed my mother. Assassinated. All that. And he and his children are going to be Kurmasa from then on. This would add tensions to um, the Suran Empire as a whole. Cause destabilization. But fortunately, that means... All the Zoroastrian holy sites are now under the control of the Kurmazta. The Kurmazta faith, however. Again, it does not say anything about religious heads. Don't, we don't need one. That would be for Manichaeans. Like Manichaeans already have a religious head. The, uh... The, uh... What, what is it called again? F. Shinana is the current one. Even though she mainly resides in Samarkand. Even though it's not in my court, but you know what I mean. So Manikam still has a role. But there are still some Tibetans and Tengrists out there. Who I would love to spread the faith to others too. Which we might as well do that now very briefly. You're my corpses, right? Oh, can't risk. 
Especially all of ones who are so blind. Eh, yeah, give it a shot. See if you can convince the Avars to convert to our faith. Since we have a higher moral authority than theirs now. But keep in mind. These holy sites are still held by Zoroastrian Mobads. Not yet for any Varamps. It's of our faith. It could change over time, but however the vassals themselves are mainly Zoroastrian, so it'd be impossible to convince. Especially that he who sits on that holy site there. Speaking of which, we need to get to know each other a little better. As I will send my Bozog Famada on your way. Mm -hmm. So, our next goal is for this series, the remainder part of the Sogdian series, we'll likely to make our northeastern expansion all the way to Danghuang, even though that's currently under the Imperial Tributary of the Western Protectorate, which is currently undergoing a civil war. But who knows what could happen up there. And as you can see, Exhid Yen on the twister you may have noticed oh, for some time now that um, she wears a much different attire just to represent a free Sogdian ruler. Just to give it more grandeur in Vagelia and all that as she wears red with necklaces and a red turban like headdress as well. Unless red could symbolize all the blood that's been stained for. For the fight of our freedom as a Sogdian nation, as a people. But keep in mind, she doesn't have too many traits. We only know that she's stubborn, ambitious, and just. As she's trying to, you know, make those people calm down, despite her kinsling reputation, she's trying to win over her vassals again. But in order to win over the vassals more, it's about time that we travel around the realm and see how it's doing. As a free nation. She's only been exited for about four years. And she will go to it. You might as well pay up while you're at it. And who's going to be the designated regent? You. You're the one with the high stewardship as compared to me. So let us go. Inefficient domain. After deliberation with my advisors and family, I've decided to survey my realm. The preparations will take several days, but the experience will be worth it. After all, it is one thing to hear how my realm is doing. Uh, Another to see with my own eyes. I cannot wait. She's going to make preparations for her journey. As soon as Pizak arrived in Kutan Bulak, High Chief Kut II ordered his imprisonment. My Moipat is now languishing in the dungeons of his pagan lord. Who could tell what savages will do to him? Well, that was to be expected. Hmm. For now. Readying my horses and carriages on and entourage, I leave my residence early in the morning. Probably be gone for months so as I try to learn more about them. What the nobles do when I'm not around? How to comment the story? Which regions possible and which language? So many things to find out. Me and my entourage uh, come across a horrific scene while patrolling of some nearby roads. An entire caravan of merchants massacred, possibly by bandits, business rivals, thieves, who knows what. Some of my men suggest that I loot all their belongings. No, should give them a proper burial. I am just, you know. Shit. 
John Shaw Arsmusman have outdated have outdated drilling routines. It's almost embarrassing to see them in action. I could send him some books or maybe some commanders to help him get his men up to date. That's because he's assisting the Lachmids during their vassalization war with uh, Sana. A commander will get those soldiers scratching out them. Halfway through. Fair price. Never mind. I got Plezak back. There, got your job back. <laughs> Today I am stopping by one of my vassals of reticences. However, the food prepared doesn't taste that good. To be honest, I almost vomited. I managed to trick my host into thinking I was choking on something. As a person of high stewardship, I'll help them find better food supplies. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that the guy that I just... Yep, I just fired. <laughs> oh, great. That guy. Hmm. <laughs> Survey the realm is almost complete. Is there a little bit more traveling to do? Might be a good time to reflect on everything that has happened. Indeed. Oh, since we have a higher moral authority than the Manichaeans, so I think it'll be easier to convert Bukhara now. Today I am visiting a holy site in my realm, that the Balk. I just arrived and someone should be showing me around this place anytime soon. Offer donations. Following Nanaya's will is more than anyone else, anything else. I've gained a zealous trait. Yes, zealous, just like my ancestors. The survey of the realm is coming to a close and I am almost home. The site of my residence in the far distance is a welcoming sight, indeed. Nevertheless, I have learned much from my journey. And hopefully these lessons will serve me well in the coming years. Still, there is no place like home. So, she's become zealous to the uh, Kurmas of Faith just to show that she is a fervent defender of the faith for here. Well, you can't really claim yourself defender of the faith because this is a, a religion with no religious head. And who knows, if she, if she feels that way... <laughs> yeah. Which again, she's dedicated to a meritat, immortality, and her patron deity is Desi. Whenever we get Fragana back, we get a tannery. We do make plenty of money, so it would be wise to search the main for resources now that we have all this free time. And I will hold a Sogdian in favor too. So, here's a reminder for you people since it's been a while. This year we shall host a great fair and market in Samarkand, an opportunity for us to encourage trade and commerce in our realm. While we can hold a standard fair, there are other fairs traditional among Songdian people as well. A fair of Mach, for instance, is where idols are sold and merchants of different faiths exchange an atmosphere of tolerance. Conversely, at the Tirma fair, defective goods can be sold in the name of good fun, of course. And there's the uh, Mech... Uh, Mech... I can never forget that out. I may have to go I have to go look it up because there's some other website where I saw um was reading translations of uh the Sogdian language through the Manichaean script. And and they kinda gave me an idea of how some of these words are pronounced. But anyways, there's this fair where stolen or counterfeit things are sold. 
Obviously, the stolen goods are part of the fun tradition rather than actual theft, usually. Now, let us send word to the Sogdian merchants and Sartapals and uh, to others along the Silk Road that this year we will have a... Well, since we won for our War of Independence, let's make it special. Um, even though if I were to hold this fair, it could help me lose... It could potentially make me lose that Zealous Trait, which I don't mind. I mean, yeah, it gives you more piety and all that, but do I really need to be that pious? And plus, it is part of Sogdian policy that we have religious tolerance. Because this realm is tolerant of other religions, which means higher religious flexibility, but lower the chance to convert provinces. Lower the chance? But if you were to go the other way, Revocation of Infidel Tiles 3, but it doesn't say anything about lower chance to convert. Count to convert is only this much percent yearly. Okay, I get it now. Anyways, let's just hold the, f the fair of Ma, the uh, where it's for idols are sold and all that. Didn't lose it, but hey, it's a chance. I guess I want to remain so. Wait a minute, what? Fish Tusp. My son has. Was that you? Those two are still here enough to see up, but he just went to uh, Konj as uh, Dekon, the mayor. I don't think it's often for the Sogdians to see the sea before. But at least they can't land females. I'll give you struggle, Lakshana. Well, that means I can't educate him. I mean, it's one of those courtiers who are Zoroastrians. They're likely to raise him. Which means that my son could turn Zoroastrian. Orthodox Zoroastrian. As compared to our own version of it. The syncretic form of it. That's rather troubling. Acted on him. Dishonorably. I could challenge him to a duel. I mean, I'm already Kid Slayer. So if I were to kill him, what do you think does that make me? It's not going to make it any worse. With continuous activity of the Domain Overseer was able to improve stability in Kotal. Good. Because there's some unruly provinces, because there's a lot of volatile provinces. Balk, Bahara. Orsusana and Chach. They all have volatile provinces, so Bakar will be next. Should I really duel him? My combat skill is 68. His is 39, and he's brawny too. Are we really gonna go down that route? I mean, you're the ambitious one. But quite honestly, he could be too dangerous to be left alive. And it even makes me wonder, what kind of crime did he commit? He's not backing any plots. But I am suspicious of him. You're not a commander, are you? Oh, he is. Take him off command. He should not be this close to me. But, uh... Look, as much as I have my personal issues and I fear things, but I don't think it'll be wise to get rid of Hey Kosro. Because he's the best commander of the Sogdian army. You know, the army that helped you liberate this country. That helped you win its freedom. And all that. So. Maybe one day we'll come to... We'll come to agree with something. But, the, but for now, he will remain the heir of Sogdiana.
Just need to increase his opinion more. Sure. Excellent. I'm 28 years old. And there's not a lot I can do. Unless I want to be part of the Great Trade League, which I do have the stewardship skill for it, but there's no reason to do that. Because he's already got that. No reason to do that. <laughs> no, I will remain a strong military woman who is zealous to the faith and be willing to defend it. We don't fight holy wars. Well, one day we will claim for gonna back. The fair at Samarkand is officially underway. Merchants from all over the Silk Road come to peddle their wares, trade their goods, and exchange contact information. Even those who aren't merchants, be they commoners or nobles, can do some shopping or enjoy some of the festivities. The silk must flow. This is the Mark Fair. Keep in mind how I pronounce that letter X in the Sogdian language. Like how I pronounce the, even though it's spelled with an X, but you pronounce it as H, like honey. That's how you pronounce that in the Songdian language. Songdian music and dance is popular in many lands. It plays as far away as China and Japan. During these fairs, both foreigners and natives, myself included, come to watch Songdian musicians and dancers perform their art. I really like this song they're playing right now. Just heard some good music. Anything to help to get that diplomacy up temporarily. During the fair, I've come across a group of merchants praying. They are pious Muslims, it seems, who do their best to pray five times a day. Go elsewhere. <laughs> I mean, we Muslims pray five times a day too. It's true, that's where they get it from. Ostrich eggs, ostrich eggs, ostrich eggs from ostriches in Arabia. Best ostrich eggs in st at the Samarkand Fair. Get your ostrich eggs here. Ostrich eggs. Ooh, ostrich eggs, I want to try some. It's exotic food. Hmm. I was just looking something up just to make me smile. Best part of these fairs is obviously the food, of course. Since people come from all across the Silk Road, there are obviously a lot of different cuisines and it's local boiled meats and vegetables, as well as flatbreads, pilaf, and nutty syrupy sweets, of course, and also more exotic dishes like Chinese noodles, Indian curries, and Greek baklava. I have plenty of time to try them all, so today I'll first try some. I mean, I don't have a lot of children, and, uh, despite the fact who I am married to, this is Syrian, Zoroastrian, but syrupy sweet cakes, it's a dessert. Unfortunately, the fair at summer camps come to an end. Merchants are leaving elsewhere, so it will be a while before the fair of this magnitude will be held again, but I'm happy that I got a chance to participate in it. Hope to host another one soon. Since this was a mock fair, you also gain a bit of piety for him. Since we had a tense military buildup, we felt it's about time to uh, start building castle towns for more tax income. But don't spend too much because you're going to spend money on the uh, resources. Pretty much got it all covered. Might as well. Hey. The rest. Oh god, he's sick of consumption. I do not trust my sister. A Chinese man. 
I like how it says Chinese instead of Han. Chinese is a nationality. Han is the proper ethnic group. Cynic. Actually, that is separate. Man, this mod. Called Son of Mara, the evil god in Buddhism. One day I am sitting with my daughter, Roxana, and I decide that I should show her an excerpt from, from the Gathas in hopes of teaching her the way of Kurumazta. That's what I am assuming, or the way of whatever monastic society is supposed to have, even though it does not exist in Zoroastrianism, because in Zoroastrianism they reject asceticism. So she's very tender, sure she will grow up to join me in the, uh, in the society which doesn't exist. But nevertheless, she's an excellent student. So she'll gain some learning and intrigue. She gained two learning and one intrigue. A volatility in a Kazakum desert. Right. Want to make a friend? Oh, I know what to do. We should go carousing. That's going to be the next focus. Carousing, of course. Just befriend somebody in uh, court. Easy. You gain diplomacy, and you get more diplomacy. As I said, I want to win people over. Here's that uh, there's a num non legible number of ruffians and bandits in the area. Would be too dangerous to send your men without protection. I'll send them more guards. This time. practically done with Ark of Mud. One of my foreign-born courtiers has managed to find a spouse who also hails from their homeland. I wish them a good marriage. Hindu Varaksha. Odd name. I've heard that Zoraster himself expressed doubts about whether sacred marriage between family members was a good thing. When I hear that, I feel strangely comforted, as I have sometimes had similar doubts about such practices, but I know in the end the truth can sometimes be scary and confusing. Better to know the truth than to live a life of lies after all. Not deceitful nor honest. And since I am zealous, one would think I would have to become honest. It'd be contradictory for, for her to suddenly become a, a woman of faith. I mean, after all, it was said that um, Ahura Mazda said that Sogdiana, this land here, is the second best land that Ormazd has created. Oh god, what happened to you? Lost your leg while in combat. Well, best wishes to you, but I believe he'll live because he's got a military education. And if you happen to have a Sogdian colony on your end, be sure to hold a Sogdian fair and eat some healthy food. We need to get his opinion up to at least uh, 50, and then we'll negotiate a uh, non-aggression pact. So that way he'll never attack us. Now that we're a free country. Wait till July. Another Chinese man. 
married a woman named Hua. Where do you people come from? The real question is how long have they been here? But then again, after all, you live in the middle of the Silk Road. Those migrants. They are becoming a problem. Okay, it's time. We'll switch to carousing focus. Anyone from the from those who are married to me and the council. Any of you wish to go carousing with me, you may choose to do so. Anybody who's friends with me are more than likely to support me on whatever act that I must pass. could be my friend. But at least it'll help with the diplomacy. And then after those years, until um, 624, I will switch to um, either rulership or theology. Because of who she is. That's why. Charitable sounds good to have because you need more diplomacy. Check your answers. This it's a gas socializer. He didn't have a lifestyle trait. He was a socializer too, despite being a patriot. Small tax break should help him. Peasants are always superstitious, and the appearance of a comet in the skies caused panic among my people. They are convinced that this is a sign that the end times is near, or that something bad is going to happen in the near future due to my inept rule. Huh. <laughs> Stop looking at the sky! Okay, got the middle one. Comment with side of zone this increases stability and sanity which feels surely the sign of the end of days. Donner's into intrigue, so sign you a guardian who is very much into that. I fear. Hey, what's going on over there? Oh, India's in revolt. The Guptas over there, led by the Indo Scythian, wants to um, leave the empire. And they will try to fight for it. They have 7,000 strong while the Gupta Empire themselves. I think they may have a chance. Well, meanwhile. Over on the other side of the Gupta Empire, he wants the throne. Oh, got an affected wound. Does he have any traits that is healthy to him? I guess Nestorian? Yeah, Nestorian Christians. Figured. Carousing. Keep that one in mind. Friends of my Moipat. So you made a friend and you have a permanent jump on your diplomacy. 
Anything else? Sounds like a good idea. That's an easy one to become charitable. <laughs> Didn't you already befriend a priest? Actually, no. Priest feudal. And it gives you one to focus. Actually, you should give that a try. Befriend any of the Varams you see next time. Just to help with the diplomacy gain. Okay, that's a good idea after all. As I said, trying to win over the people and the vassals. After a hundred years under the Khanate of Sogdiana, that Targzat, that Targharita of uh, Sogdiana is no longer a digital part of the Kingdom of Transoxiana. That is part of it. In the next couple of years, Osrasana and Judge will be permanently part of Sogdiana. grounds is always good because look at the special units you have 500 of them 508 special units that means horse archers we'll take it from here we got raiders Oh, you're pretty good at your job as well. But I'm a flanker, so I should be in a flank. In a position of honor. Oh, crud. More migrants. It was a small migration, but now it's turned into a medium migration. That means more trouble. We'll catch him. And stay out. So we mentioned about this um, Empire of Serendia. Well, technically now it's... No, no, it's been that way. It's just this idea. Gee, what if it's like... So that means the King of Transoxiana will no longer be a a title that could be created, and that means if you want to form a Sogdian Empire, you better go up there. <laughs> so, sounds like that idea is realistic. But as long as you keep it on shall we?
Okay. Calling for any Varam who wishes to join me. It did say any of, you know, what. What is must be true. Monk, non druid, theocracy. I don't think it's correct. Oh, give me a moment. Give me a holy man. Stick around in case this doesn't work. Also, I don't think that man was a Varam because his hat was different. That last one you just saw. Oh, gosh! Stretching. You dead yet? Hope you die of old age sooner or later. Drop dead, yo. <laughs> Am I really that callous? Ah, oh boy. These damn people. Troublemakers they are. Trouble, trouble, troublemakers. My best friend. Okay, it does count, huh? Plus, he was the first guy that I um, offered him. So, there you go. Another increase in your diplomacy skill. You're getting good at this. Gain a virtue. Don't eat the charity. Didn't get it. I am truly a dedicated Karasa. Celebrate Noruz this year. Another reason why I haven't been doing much. Zigwan. It's April. There's so many volatile provinces out there that could destabilize everything here. And yet I'm the one with the just trait. Buy them proper attires. Better find that bastard. This new year shall soon be upon us in the world of Iran. From the snow capped Pamir Mounts to the fertile plains of Mesopotamia, shall soon be celebrating this holiday that's been observed since ancient times. This year, I tend to make Nuroz a spectacle for years to be remembered. To, for years, to be remembered for years. Let's make preparations. First, begin by clearing out my entire residence. I have a good feeling about the upcoming new year. No roads has officially begun. I wake up in the morning full of energy and excitement before I do have anything of importance. However, I first taste honey thrice and light three candles before speaking to anyone to ensure good luck and ward off disease. Now that, that's taken care of. Time to prepare for the court ceremony. First day of Noruz. I welcome Noruz in a lavishly decorated hall. My servants have placed silver and gold plates and vases filled to the rim with wild, with fruits and colorful flowers. 
all throughout and it looks beautiful. As custom has it, I am first greeted by the uh, court astronomer. He kisses the ground and congratulates me on the new year. Wishes me good fortune and prosperity for the coming year. Good, now let the musicians and singers come in. My court will enjoy the entertainment, certainly. A song of music of Noros. All is festive and joyful as the musicians and singers come in. And my courtiers sit at their assigned locations at the... As the highest ranking member of the court, I have the right to choose whichever song I want the musicians and singer to perform first. There are many songs traditionally performed during Noros, and only Noros after all. Perhaps I'd like to hear the grand Noros il Bozol, or the softer, more exotic Noros il Wahawi, or maybe the uplifting and spiritual body a Norosi, and there's also the sweet and lovely Take Perus. Oh, I'm zealous and care about piety. I wish to hear the soft sounds of Norozi Iwahawi. Chinese characters having children. I watch as the fires are kindled everywhere in the surrounding villages and towns during the Noroz celebration. May joy and hope spread everywhere. The fire is meant to symbolize the most amazing acts of creation being reacted on a smaller scale. Amazing, yes. Near a Noruzi. Haha. De Kwan Kushanakanak. As we crown the Near a Noruzi, or the Noruzian ruler. As a fake king, he's been given an entire fake throne, officials, and soldiers. Unfortunately, De Kwan um, Kushanakanak. Now, do as he wishes being the Near Noruzi. Thankfully, his ring will last few days. See how this goes. Hopefully, he won't be forced to do anything stupid. Although, he might. Damn it! He is definitely enjoying his powers as the mirror in order. He maybe do some very embarrassing things. Things so embarrassing I want to curl up a ball and die every time I think about them. He'll pay for this. His reign has come to an end. Now everyone is rid of him on the throne. Beat him and force him to flee the building. Or back into his jail cell. <laughs> Won't this be fun? Yes, quite fun. Violence is quite fun. No rose in. This year's no rose has been nothing short of exciting and fun. But alas, all good things come to an end. The world begins to calm and settle down as I return to my normal routine. May this year be a good one. This again. We still await. Really, he's the Duke of our Khorasan. So does that mean, uh... Land's not gonna split that much? Oh. No, he's one of the things here. Hey, who's that? There we go again. I'll take this area, thank you. Go. We gotta take care of those raiders. Stay out. Not like that, you fool. Try to stomach him. Now that it's September, that means we can hold digestion at Sedet Festival. According to legend, Persian King Husheng discovered a cigarette of fire in the hollow to pass and bought it to benefit all people. We must celebrate this with the Jeshin is Sadid Festival. It is held to honor fire and defeat the forces of darkness, frost, and cold. Send out the invitations. 
And after the Jasher festival, we'll go Karam. When I met the peasant leaders of Kotal, and I was able to hear their complaints and form an opinion on their requests, then I used my best judgment to concede on their just appeals. I never allowed my position of power to blur my thought, but I was also adamant that my decision gets void complaints. In the end, everyone was blessed with my sense of justice. Thus, things tend to improve. That's because of your just trait rather than the high stewardship, but a combination of both helps. A festive mood is in the air. Bonfires are being built near the temples and lakes. Fathers are taking their sons to gather wood for pyres, while women prepare food for the festival. Whoever does not give a wrench, may God not grant their wish. So the fires are lit. As part of the Jashin uh, Esare, the Mobads bless their communities with the Atash Nirgish, the land of the of fire. As a sovereign, I expect to attend the ceremony in my capital. Wow. I mean, morale of armies is what helped us liberate uh, this country to its freedom. But one day we will liberate Fergana. So, for now, just to continue protecting our realm, heathens are no match for the light of Zervan. We shall have a big increase in levy size all over. A group of priests carried the sacred fire to the throne room. My vassals followed them are directed to the seats by servants. Let us celebrate the glory of our mas. Ashim Vohu. Celebrations are finally over. I feast on a bountiful food while outside the bonfires are burned out, having successfully driven away the demons of frost and cold. Soon the light of summer shall soon be upon us. Until next time. I'll carouse one more time. What's your husband? Wanna come? Just you and me together. Okay, not you. This may sound like a bad idea, but maybe it's possible that we could try to befriend either to drop your rivalries and um, yeah, let's get things settled. Okay, if they don't come, I understand. Yeah, figured it didn't work. Oh. Hmm. Slightly better spiders than me and your fellow sucked in and commander. How about you? Again, I need trust. There we go. So he'll come. That was what or not become friends, and then I will be, uh... Oh, who knows? Send my spy master to deal with him. Great job, Mr. Idiot. Now you want to kill me. Now there's an excuse to arrest you. Oh, you got plenty of backers. My sister, my aunt, my aunt, my, uh, my other aunt, and the Varamspa. Aha! He planned to avoid my guardsmen and fled to the court account. Of course you would. You're not going to get away with this. Yes. A soggy and zealous war, I assume that's who that man is. Plus, he was my best commander now that he left the country. 
Lay supports on Kotal till the increased tensions between the migrants and the dwellers of the province and may fund a policy of approach between both groups or face the real possibility of a degradation of the conditions in the province. Fund the policy of approach. Now. Where do you come from exactly? Kunduts. Oh. It's probably the Hunas that's moving in. Those are the kind of migrants. Best friends of the spy master. He can always uh, trust me, unless um, I get so paranoid about recent possible assassination attempts on my life because of the things I did. You may want to hire an in intriguer. Should I be a socializer? Because it's very, very useful to, for diplomatic matters. But uh, who knows? I'll just say, well, it was fun. I don't think I need to be a socializer. I'm not trying to break tradition here of who we are as Sogdians, which we're very welcoming of people. We're very hospitable people. Gee, it's been a while. It's been 10 years. But keep in mind, I'm married to an ugly man, so I may never know that the child could be born ugly. Key word could. And they call him the son of Angramainu because he did something terrible. Cutter's Lodge. Anything is good enough. As long as you have more resources. You there. Loyalist advisor. Advisors make good loyalists. I mean, and friends make good loyalists. Sure about that? Because we do tolerate the people of other faiths here. But at least I could still do what I want because I'm not going to give more power to the council because I don't have a lot of vassals in me. But if I want to abolish it, then here's the problem. You will lose those benefits of uh, spouse empowerment. Lower chance of our promises. So things are changing here. Listen, good friends, I need your support. We're changing the religious policy from tolerant to indifferent because of who's running the area. Of course, talking about our. Kurumastas who live in foreign lands ruled by infidels often have to deny that the, they practice of encourage sacred marriages between siblings or a parent no, or between a parent and child. When asked by the authorities, they feign uh, uh, ignorance. Saying such rumors are slanderous lies, if I were in a situation, would I pretend to loathe the sacred marriage though, or would I tell the truth? Even if it costs my life, I will defend the truth.
you want piety, I'll give you piety. Oh no, you don't. I'm gonna raise the, the troops here. I've been a, I've truly been a model code monster host. I'll negotiate with you in just a moment. No, you don't. Had to slow him down. We got the guy. And him too. Pay up. I'll let you out of here. What little money you have? We'll take it. Final months of the pregnancy. Didn't realize I went to combat pregnant. That was risky. I am bringing Roxana to the local. It's there today. There she meets many of my brothers and sisters who uh, greet her politely as we leave the monastery. That's what they were supposed to be, even though Zorasters don't do monasticism either. My daughter says, you know, I would have to assume. I don't know any Zoroastrian greetings. As much as I like Zoroastrianism and all that, but is there a proper greeting of it? Because I only know a few of the uh, mantras and a uh, few other things, including Ashen Vahu. So she said to all those she met today, I'm very proud of her and to the ways of it. Excellent student she is. It's learning in martial arts. Two martial, two learning. That's how much she picked up. If she keeps doing good, and she also just became rowdy. If she keeps doing good, I might not have to name her hair. Hair. Everyone knows I spent years and years directing the final work of my book. Oh, and today I'm presented with the final product. Excellent, I commend my scribes. Well, I gently leave through Kodax Unash. This has been... Worth all the hard work. Codex. Fourth book for the library. A compilation of several chapters, each focusing on different weapons and fighting techniques that were uh, common in the era of Exid Yena of Sogdiana. This adds more morale damage and as well as the morale of armies. Basically a very useful book for a military ruler. Such as herself. Keep on, you also have the Nash Cookbook. Many Sins of Princess Erdat Venturi, written by my mother. And of course, this book from China. Now I have another daughter, I see. Anakit. It's kind of late, but we're going to hold this feast at this part of the month. The wandering minstrels entered the castle singing and did not stop until he found me. With the flourishing bow and one long sad tone from his lute, he finished his song going to ask for my patronage. I was looking for some entertainment for my face. No longer restless. 
No feast is complete without boar meat. Who will get the prestigious task of hunting and slaying the boar instead of the feast? <laughs> oh gosh. He's infirm. He's stressed. Not to mention slow. May have to put him out of his misery. Send out the marshal. He did his job, Hex. The best part of preparing the feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. I must purchase venison, boar, duck, and spices, wine, and ale, honey for the desserts, cheese, and perhaps even a swan or a peacock. I will see to it that we make the use of the existing recipes for inspiration because I have the Unesh cookbook by uh, Faridun. Which Faridun to be exactly? I believe it's the that grandfather of mine. Yes, my grandfather. He wrote that book. He knows all about it. He knows all about the good old Saldian cuisine. I know some don't like me. And plenty. Mm -hmm. Finally. No longer volatile up there. Actually, bull. It's still volatile up there. <laughs> Guests have finally arrived. All was ready. And the cooks have worked day and night preparing the food. And the castle's never looked lovely. Welcome to my feast. Guess it's just a normal feast with no special events. So, yes. Everybody enjoyed the feast here. And let's hold a normal Sogdian fair, simply for the sake of it. I only do those little other fairs for special occasions. Oh, that time's coming soon. He's depressed and he's infirm. Soon he's going to become incapable. Oh my goodness. 27 kills. Mostly died in dungeons, but has he ever eaten? Oh my goodness, sawed in half. I don't think he's much of a cannibal as much as he ate out of anger, I think. There's such things as eating another person angry. It can happen. Like that one Dutch prime minister who got... Oh, or that got eaten a bit. Don't ask who, I just heard it from somewhere. There's a merchant here at the fair uh, who trades in precious jewels and stones. Perhaps I should buy some and commission a local jeweler to make me something lovely. Currently, the following gems are still on sale. Lapis lazuli from Afghanistan, diamonds from the heart of India, turquoise from all the way from China, and amber from the cold forests of the north. How about diamonds from India? Diamonds are forever. Kebabs. Volatile province removed. For real this time, no. Switch the crown focus up here. I need two warriors. <sighs> Come on. Okay. Excellent. There's one more vault I promise to clear up. The hospital in Dashwa Woods has seen an increasing amount of people looking for food and shelter lately. It could barely provide the food required as it is. Perhaps this could be a good opportunity to make an impression. I shall make preparations at once. Prepare food and supplies to be handed out as charity. Alms and other supplies have been brought to, um, to the hospital. It will make the life much easier for those in need. The question now is how to present this extraordinary gift. 
you don't have much traits, but um I am doing it for the people. Smooth talker. Forgot. The non aggression pack. Continue this way, I'm just a tad bit longer. So that way, Iran Share could never threaten Sogdiana. For as long as we shall live. Even if he is our fellow uh, Kermasta Faithful. Keep an eye on him. His successor isn't a good one either. Oh gosh. Of course they would attack him. He's blind. After sitting down with a delegation led by the Shan Shah Arshama of the Suran Empire, it was with relief that I found plenty of common ground with the other side. We were both eager to sign a non-aggression pact. And there is a reason why I said that she's probably important to me. I mean, look at her. Now that she's 16. She is deceitful, which Zorashians don't like that, but makes her a suitable spy master. Plus, she is of uh, Persian Parthian descent because of that Parthian bloodline. That's the reason why those children of mine, especially those two, so it would have to be either Pavana or Roxana to be the important ones. Like which one of you is better than anyone else? Although it's, it's gonna make people mad. It's gonna make people mad that, um. That, um. That I would soon name a female heir. Both of them. All top prompts are moved up there as well. I didn't put the crown focus, I'm putting it up here. We're just bringing stability back to our nation. That's what we're here for. Another daughter. Sanakram. You dead yet? <laughs> Just losing patience here. In preparation for the upcoming conflict, start training troops here. Increase the levy size. Yeah, why not a castle study here in Panjikin? Soup kitchens will be built all over the country if the technology is available. Great escape. My spy master Kenny would suggest to help a foreign individual that has value for my future plans. He is being held in a foreign prison and seems to be in possession of valuable information about military economy and culture technologies that could provide an edge to my efforts. Let's rescue him. I am not sure that this will work because my spy master is a moron. And I don't trust that one. 
I'm gonna give my daughter a chance. And we'll watch she show her what she's got. And this July. Late July. I think I should switch to um, a theology focus. Oh, she'd be excellent, but I don't know. Because if she becomes dull... Uh, by the way, here's a qualification here. If she happens to pick up the dull trait, I am voting for Parvanet. Even though she only has two traits. Groom is not a personality trait. This is your only chance. Someone that would be me. Just raise your money a bit. Oh gosh. Rescue mission and a disaster when the man we were rescuing was slain by an enemy agent. As he was evading from prison, unfortunately some of my operatives paid with their life for their freedom during the staring time. Possibly point to my own vomit. Thomas of Legio for Flavia Felix, Commander of the Eastern Roman Empire. Yipe. done. Another source of income. Another toothpick. <laughs> oh god. This guy's got an inbred trait. But he is the brother of the Shansha. Honor for the betrothal. Like it or not, it's the way it's gonna be. Man, how did he move up, huh? Theology focus. Not only for health reasons, but also increased a little bit of learning. And, uh, of course, I'd just like to get a virtue. Even if I have to donate to charity whenever that option is brought up again. I guess the future of Sogdiana will be ran by women. Not necessarily vassals and all that. It's just the exit women will be the future for Sogdiana. Thank you very much. Let's talk strategy. You're a military man as much as I am. My dissertation on military matters is very appreciated, it seems. You thank me for sharing my knowledge of him, remarking that he will treasure from what he's learned from me. How could he not? Yeah, minus one, minus one. He's and slightly negated due to his wife just died. I got killed by rabble. I just saw that. Big Zorastrian uprising over there. It's just he overextended his empire, that's the reason why. There's a problem. I think there is a real chance that the Zorastrians will get themselves free. 
And they would likely become a threat to national security. I like how you said threat to national security. That kind of tone and tenor. It all sounded as another one of his ex paranoid delusions. I had to agree that when he invited me for dinner that the food had an odd taste and a rather strange lingering aftertaste. Someone might be trying to poison him. You'll need my help and you'll get it. Dedication to religious pursuits have been noticed around the realm. Oh, among others, quite impressed Varam Artavan of Ajina. I've managed to correspond on various religious and philosophical matters for some time and find that I'm rapidly becoming good friends. Even though he's an infirm and a member of the Hermetic Society. If I had a, if I was a person that has a very high learning education, I would do a Hermetic Society. How are you? Stubborn, just like me. But again, if you pick up Dole, you're not qualified to rule. Can't trust you. Waiting. Do I have a son? It is a son. What kind of name is Pato? Is that one of your Syrian ancestor names? Because that doesn't sound like a... A... Uh, you know. I'll name him after my friend. Artavan. But however, this prince is too young, and this other Shazade is living over there. Jackpot. Yep, we're definitely holding a, another Salt Game Fair this year. Because I need to do something with that amount of money. Zoroastrians do not like me if I go celibate. Because they want to. You know how they are. I also got a mission plan for you. Hope you do well. Because some of the provinces are restless and they need guidance. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I. I was supposed to make it indifferent. I thought we passed that already. Am I nuts or something? Possibly. I'd like to save it up for construction for for hospital reasons. In fact, what is their post over in Iran share? They're tolerant too, okay. If they're tolerant, that means they cannot declare holy wars against us. At least in theory. I, I don't know how it works over there. I don't live in Tehran anymore. That's only because you have six children. There's no reason to become celibate yet. You're a good mother. <laughs> we need to catch the bastard. 
He's made it restless again. Plus, we could use that money to um, build more hospital buildings. Not to mention, soup kitchens are good. There's Sogdian Healthcare. Mission successful. The masked boy, my overseer, explained the points of view and religious and cultural angles to the rebels. And yeah, my province was the cause of success of this whole mission. It was always super light up when we can build bridges this way, increasing the harmony of the territories. It was a total success. Alright. There's a reason why they call it the Silk Road, no? While I'm at the fair here, why don't I take the opportunity to buy some quality silk? I could use the silk to, um... You see, man, to my husband, make myself some nice clothes, maybe, for the next four years, oh yeah, definitely, just to show how grand I do look, how about some spicy lamb curry? Talking with some merchants who had traveled from faraway lands to our fair has been proving quite fascinating. Many of these men have seen these travels. I sometimes wonder if I'll ever get to see the massive Buddhist statues of Bamiyan, the Cave of the Thousand Buddhas in Mogao, the Great Wall of China, or the highest peaks of the Himalayas. Maybe someday, as she is dreaming of the Silk Road. Have women traveled on the Silk Road? I mean, I don't mean like travel with their husbands um, or anything like that but I mean um, they just travel on their own free will you know like merchants if there are any documented um, stories about w not just Sogdi women just women in general traveling across the Silk Road all on their own I think it's more of a I mean who knows maybe the Sogdians did do it because you know the women had more rights as compared to other cultures. Speaking of women's rights, um, the status of women in the Empire of Iran share is traditional. Whereas here in Sogdiana, they are notable, so there's almost no restrictions. <laughs> and I wish we could have them serve as commanders, but that ain't happening. Unless they have a certain trait, like say, adventurer. He's really overstretched himself. And the Zoroastrians over... Actually, they're going to attack them now. Hattori was a Iranian name. How do you like that? This episode will end soon, because in that next episode, oh my goodness, Kotal is a rebellious province. Quick. Send. No. Make the crown focus over there. Don't send in the marshal, because I want him to train the troops just to prepare for the eventual conflict to take Fergana back. We're going to increase the stability of the crown focus. That's one. I'll get rid of that entirely while Judge will remain volatile for the time being. He said. The old man finally croaked. He died of depression in, an, in addition to being infirm. This new ruler is a fat, lusty man who is zealous to the Buddhist face, so he can't be trusted. He's got a large army. And he's got a lot of money behind him. And that is the reason why we were training the troops. 
Because we knew something like that was going to come up. Even though I like to be virtuous one day. So, so we're going to leave with that, ladies and gentlemen. Because in the next episode, we will fight to take Fergana back entirely. It's reunited with us. And of course, it's still going to be too much land for me to hold. So that means we'll have to appoint a uh, vassal. Someone who is unlanded and someone I can trust. Of course, it would have to be any of you within court of a Sogdian origin. Or at least one of my more accomplished commanders, just to use him as a military governor. A satrap. A lesser exed, so to speak. So, we hope you've uh, enjoyed this episode, ladies and gentlemen, because Sogdiana will go on expansion again. We'll be expanding again to Fergana, and perhaps one day into the the land of the Tarum, homeland of the various, various cultures. So, hope you enjoyed this episode, but until the next one, so long for now.